only that we're all required to have uh, Christian and surnames. So uh, my grandfather was a great reader at the time and was following what was having, happening in Europe that led to the First World War. And he was intrigued by some minister uh, in the German government called Kruger. So he adopted that name, he thought it was fresh. Um, so he wrote it down and he filled out the form. And uh, so my story is when I'm invited to speak, I say I can speak English, Māori, not bad for a German. <laughs> uh, Trevor, Trevor, of course, uh, and I were hoping that I would, uh, I would speak entirely in Māori and would be translated, uh, translated to you, so I had to Google English and learn to rapidly over the last three days. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm what you call an FYI for your information. Um, my name is a record of what has happened. It's a record of diversity. Um, my, my name, I think, uh, articulates and symbolizes the changes that have occurred uh, with my people. I, I'm sharing my story with you and not at all uh, want you to think that I'm representing all Māori people, but I'm just sharing my experience as a two-hoi leader and a two-hoi person. Two-hoi is one of around, of about 60 tribal groups that are found in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, we regard ourselves as a people, a culture, and a nation. Um, there are around 40,000 Tuhoe people. Um, the mean age, average age, uh, in our iwi, or in our tribe, is 20 years old. Uh, our homeland is Tenguera. Uh, it's around 2,000 square kilometers, or 841 square miles. It's around two hours from here. It's the largest indigenous forest area left in the North Island of New Zealand. So we're mainly a forest uh, people. Uh, we, uh, we occupy uh, some wilderness areas with lakes, rivers, valleys, but mostly there are only four settlements. Uh, the biggest town in my tribal area has five shops. Um, two are run by Korean people and uh, a, a garage run by an Atimaniapoto person. Uh, this is a, a rival tribe. <laughs> he, he got it because he married my daughter. <laughs> Um, so, Tenguera was once a national park, had been a national park of New Zealand, largest national park in the North Island, fourth largest park, national park in New Zealand, and had been set up in 1957. And in 2014, we disestablished it as part of our settlement with the New Zealand government. Uh, first time that has ever happened. Uh, in New Zealand where a <coughs> national park disappeared overnight. Uh, there were lots and lots of people that were concerned about that, thought that what they had owned for 60 years had now been given over to a bunch of Maoris who were now going to build a wall. We are in discussions with Donald Trump. Um, uh, but none of that has uh, has been realised. So, David Widow is around 213,000 hectares of cross of wilderness and indigenous forest area. <clears throat> Tuhoe, uh, my people, euphemistically are called the children of the mist. It comes from our creation and origin story that we are the descendants of the mist maiden who married the mountain, Hinebu Kohurani and Temaru. Uh, we are a Tangata Whenua indigenous people. We are Māori. The word Māori means beautiful. It means natural. It means 
uh, uh, part of nature. So we are a forest people, nature is very, very important to us. And as descendants of the Mist Maiden and the Mountain, uh, that, that metaphor says we have not come from any place else. That where you know the mist to come from, that is our origin. If you wish to put time on how long mountains have been here, that's how long we have been here. So issues like climate change are very dear to us. We, we take those things very personally and wish to do things with that and to care about our place, our homeland, the planet. And so these things are more than just articulations and words, but they are very important. So, in our view, the Sky Father and the Earth Mother married, and now we are living with nature, because that is where we have come from. Nothing is disconnected or detached from na nature. Human beings, of course, have tried their best, and some have succeeded to detach themselves from nature. And as a result, we are lost. And we have been doing things that we should never be proud of. Te Uruwera is a place where man is the last born of nature's creations. So we teach our children to walk quietly and with humility. Nature does not need people, really. People need nature. We do not own the land, but we belong with it. Some people use it, we have to live with it. Tuhoe, like many, if not all indigenous people, are in recovery. We have been hurt and injured by colonization. We are in penumbra, really, you know, that grey zone of uncertainty. So, in our colonization, we have come from being single-minded with certainty to be in two minds about everything. You know, we're in doubt. Our diseases are distrust, dependency, and now no longer familiar with responsibility. You know, doubt has killed more dreams and stolen more help than failure. So, we're in a place I call preparatory, you know, where, where we are now is not where we should be. We need to be someplace else. We're frustrated, <coughs> we're angry at ourselves, and we are seeking remedies, cues to fix ourselves up. <clears throat> Iwi are kinship organizations, and we vivify high standards of care, justice, and respect. Sadly, too many Iwi are now corporate businesses. Their structure is now around money. They no longer refer to their kin as hapu and Fano, but as stakeholders and beneficiaries. Sadly, too many of us have got a consumer fetish and we are a massive ownership of stuff because some of us believe that's how you become successful that's how you become accepted 
by owning stuff. I don't believe that at all. So here we are, indigenous people beset by, disrupted by, unsettled by, and we contend with imposters, ventriloquists, and people carrying a myth of liberties, entitlements, privileges and rights. We cannot be people that are selling the sizzle but not the sausage. So, we are a kinship organisation more than anything else. Our kinship is not only with each other, but with the land, but it is with the environment, with the future and with the past. In the year 2000, Tuhue decided that they may try this treaty settlement option because we understood we cannot shape our fate we could not create a new life, a better world, by running away. We had to stay and fight for that. Our children, you know, look at their lives and they see no future. So we were supposed to protect them, to give them something. We're working on that. We take responsibility for that. The New Zealand government, any government, the Crown, is not in the business of loving people and loving children. That is not their business. They're not good at it. The government is not a kinship organisation. But we are. We have been punished too, Hoi. We have too many fatherless, jobless, and godless people. We need to protect ourselves from our own dishonesty, and that dishonesty is not, not being able to face up to the damage and the injury that has been caused by 200 years of colonization. We cannot just have a treaty settlement and believe we'll pick up from where we left it off in 1840, because we're okay, there's a few scratches and bruises, uh, but we're largely okay. We are not okay. So acknowledging our loss, our injury, the harm, and our prison self is necessary because honesty is where wisdom lives. So, Tuhoe are working for an age of better ethics and trust. We are open to the excitement, to the fear, and to the exaltation of what we need to do in the next 40 years. In 2014, there was the Uruwera Tuhoe settlement, where we pronounced that the land owns itself. Uh, the New Zealand government were shocked uh, because they had asked us to go to Canada, where some of you come from, and look at the Inuit Canadian treaties to see if we would like one of those. Uh, then uh, we were sold the Uluru Northern Territory of Australia model to see if we would have one of those where we could get three seats on a board and participate and, and be consulted and be trotted out as the native people and to, uh, to our grateful thanks, those indigenous people in Australia and in Canada told us not to do what they had done, a complete failure. So after five to 10 years of negotiations with the New Zealand government, they ran out of ideas. And so we put forward our idea that the land is a living person. 
that the land is our mother, how can we own our mother? And that the land was not property and resource owned by the government and that by giving it to us somehow property was being exchanged and the New Zealand public was losing something. So when we put forward the idea that the land owns itself, that no human being should ever own Te that is fitting with Tūhoi tradition, Tūhoi beliefs, and the New Zealand government accepted that and then acknowledged it in legislation. So, we turned a big corner. So, the two way war is on individualism, it's on dependency, it's on ownership. We have to undo all of it that has been built over 200 years. We need to restore kinship as our moral objective to everything that we do. You see, an iwi has always had governmental functions and duties. But that responsibility was taken away. And that has caused more devastation than the confiscation of land. Because how do you relearn responsibility? How do you relearn making decisions? Well, we have to think in generations rather than months or years. So Tūhoe has been around for a few thousand years. Governments come and go every three years. So I'm talking to a three-year-old. <laughs> Being a Niwi means collective decision making. It is empowering whānau, family, hapu, extended family, rohe, districts, precincts, and iwi, nations. Trust is something that we have to rebuild. Not only trust in the New Zealand government, but trust in ourselves that we can do well, that we have the answers, that we can remedy all of these things, to take responsibility for all of that. Trust is evidence of aroha, of love. And that is, that is really our mission, is to do that over the next few years. Our homeland is a place where we are now the majority population. Our homeland area, as in 1840, is basically intact. So there's something to be celebrated by the fact that it was made a national park. We have no cities in Tūrūna. So we are the majority population. We are the dominant political, economic, cultural and social community within our area. So, if we were to take a referendum tomorrow, we would win. <laughs> Uh, we do not practice individual ballot voting in Maui. We, we ran a, um, a, a set of meetings and 80, over 80% 80 of Tuhoi people agreed that we should always make decisions on a collective basis. So families, extended families make decisions that that decide which way the iwi would go. You see, when you do collective decision making, you have to think of others before yourself. You have to think of the common good, the common wealth. So, so far so good. So our belief, what other people call their vision statement, is tūhoetana, permanency. The context that we live in is 
that we shall do these things by Mana Mutsuhake, a term that I choose to translate as maximum autonomy, not separation, maximum autonomy. Our virtues are that we will say to our people and to our young that your iwine is your virtue and your word is your honour. So, being Tuhu is our antidote for extermination and despair. You know, the most common form of unhappiness, of anguish and hopelessness amongst Tuhu people is not knowing who you are and not having meaning and purpose in your life. Such a person is called by us somebody that wanders around but is lost. So these beliefs, these traditions of Tuhoi are our truths. You know, truths it's just another word for trust, faith, and confidence. Values are principles. Values and principles are standards of behavior. And this is how we earn and deserve a culture. This is how we earn and deserve to be too. So we have to grow and bring some vividness to being to It's not just an accident of DNA, but it is a standard. It is a set of principles that we live up to. It's good for your health. It's good for your well-being to know who you are. Virtues are the habits that all of us need so we may find the truths in our culture and in our life. So Toyora is Mauliora. You know that phrase I started off with, Tihei Mauliora. And so Tuhoe are looking for regular experiences of Ihi, Wehi and Wana in order to rebuild themselves and to fix themselves. Wana is a Māori term that generally, I think, depicts the thrill, the joy and excitement of life. People need that, you know, to become decent people, to become healthy people, to become good people. We need those experiences of Wana thrill, joy, excitement. We also need wehi. These are experiences of wonderment, gratitude and awe about life, about the world. That too is a building block of good, decent people. Ihi is the rapture, the blessed euphoria about life. What a wonderful thing to have, to wake up to, and to be glad and grateful to be alive and want to do good. And that, to know that your happiness depends on giving happiness, sharing happiness with others. So, two way governance is around the acknowledgement and the building of whānau, family, hapu, extended family, their marae, their place, that place that uh, represents uh, their form, their well-being, their rohe, their district, their place, their environment, and the iwi. So our governance operates on those on that basis. So of the 40,000 Tuhoi that admit to being Tuhoi, 80% uh, are abroad. They don't live in our tribal area. But their belonging is inalienable. 
they have fundamental connection to being tūhoe. They are tangata whenua and they can be ahikā, active, active in their iwi. The vibrancy of their connection, the state of their responsibility does not, does not diminish by their geographical location or their social status. These things are not barriers. Every tūhoe that has existed and every tūhoe yet to be born come into a whānau kapu rohe iwi. These things cannot be denied. But the energy is up to them, the energy of those things. That is their responsibility. So, people like myself who hold some influence and authority were appointed, not really elected. And um, I'm, I'm at the bad end of democracy. I have to report in every month, unlike Jacinda Ardern. I, I have to uh, uh, attend three or four meetings every month. And while I'm reporting, I'm being appraised by my people and they do not have to wait till the next annual general meeting. If they get tired and sick of me, uh, they say so, then uh, I then find myself in the kitchen um, doing dishes, etc., which is sometimes a better job than this. <laughs> Within Tuhue, we see our politics from a roto waho perspective. Those are, roto means all of the internal stuff that happens within our tribal area, that happens within our iwi, uh, that, that, is, uh, that is laid out by all of the extended families um, and the rohe, uh, not by the tribal office. The tribal office that I also chair takes care of all of the external matters where we meet the world, where the world would like to talk with us. Our tribal communities have monthly forums. All of these are voluntary membership. Uh, it's all about collective enterprise, decision making. We have a shared leadership model. Uh, so uh, anything that happens within my territory, I, I am not necessarily <laughs> leading that out. So there's much for us to unlearn to relearn as Tuhoi, as we find our ways to a, our find our way to a better position. There are many things, you know, that are restored, but we have, I think, the ability to redesign and create these things. We must never ever tolerate as Tuhoi people behaviours of vanity self-indulgence, because the, those things make us artificial. Humility is the hardest virtue, you know, because it makes us real. It reveals the divine nature of life and of humanity. So our work is to fix ourselves. And as we do that, the experience will teach us how to do it. Nature Teuruwera is our guide and our inspiration. You know, order is hidden in everything in nature, in the patterns of nature, in the patterns of the natural world. There is order there. Its complexity made simple. And the more we learn, the taller we get. Education makes you taller. You know. And learning, well, learning must never ever have the objective of knowledge. Learning must only do one thing, lead us to action. So in nature, I know that there are only consequences. There are no rights, there are no rewards, there are no punishments, no entitlements just consequences. 
Two where people are born with responsibilities, not expectations of rights. And being two where I'd like to share, share with you is being two where I'm completely immune to flash bang grenades and pepper spray. So, some of the things that we're doing at home is we've fallen in love with living buildings. Uh, we have the only living buildings outside of the United States. Living buildings are, you know, the high brow of eco buildings. We're now building eco villages. We're starting that this year. We have what we call the mending room where we cooperate with the courts and the police to divert two queer people and others uh, from getting criminal records and mending them. We call these the mending room. We don't call ourselves a panel. We call ourselves part of the mending room where we try and fix uh, mainly young people to find their way. We have our own peer response program with our community uh, because that's our job to offer hope and assistance and to care for those of us with addictions. Do we have a plan? Yeah, our, our peer response plan is to have a peer response plan. Will it work? We have no idea. Uh, but we're proud to say that we're doing something. We're not waiting for a government agency or department to do something. We have built three out of four medical centres. We run them ourselves. We hire GPs. Our first GP was from Alaska. That helped us to start this up. Uh, we have 2,000 people that, that I enrolled in our medical centres. Uh, these medical centres are run by our communities and they're the ones that decide what the health priorities are. And uh, it's, I, I find it really aggravating when I go and see the GP and the GP is talking to my uncle and he's been in there 40 minutes and he pays by pumpkins and sweet corn. And because I'm working, I have to give a donation. So these are our medical centers. We are in the middle of education design. We are sitting down with people from the ministry to design a more appropriate two education system. Mate Mate Aone, is our collaboration with Orana Tamariki, formerly known as SIPS. And mate mate aone is a word akin to the English word redimency, which is love returned in full. We are working with district councils over fresh water supply, wastewater systems, energy and recycling within our rohe, within our tribal area. We're also experimenting with a nature's road thing where we are, we have been looking for an alternative to bitumen and so we're doing stuff uh, with, uh, uh, with timber oil, with timber uh, fluid and we've been experimenting now for a year and it's worked out really well and uh, so we're trying to use other local materials uh, in view of the fact that we're going to run out of dinosaurs and coal and, uh, and you're not going to be able to fix your roads up with waste petrol and waste diesel anymore, uh, which is what bitumen is made out of. So, our beliefs are the choices that affect our choices. So all of this Two who is stuff that I've shared with you should be straightforward. After taking that ring all the way to Mordor, I think I can do this. <laughs> so, tihei Māori ora to you. Tihei Māori ora is 
beautiful thinking, its balance, its vitality. And Tihei Māori Ora does not have an end by date on it. Kia ora koutou. Thank you.